I've made a terrible mistake. Welcome to the second devlog for Cloudscape. I was a bit apprehensive about starting a devlog, but the overwhelming positive feedback and support I've received on the first video is really amazing and it really means a lot to me. At the time of me making this video, the channel has gained over a thousand subscribers in a week and I'm absolutely blown away. Thank you everyone for all your positive feedback and comments, I read every single comment and I greatly appreciate it. So when deciding on a good combat feel, I look no further than one of my all-time favorite games, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. And after doing some research, I came to some interesting conclusions. For starters, Link's attack animation is actually centered at the top of his collision block. This kind of surprised me because I always assumed it originated at the center. This is most notable when attacking in the north and south directions. This makes sense since the sword attack would originate more from his shoulders than from his feet. I'm just dumb and my brain doesn't work very well. Another interesting thing about the attack is that it only actually affects a single block next to Link. That might seem like it's an obvious thing at first, but it's interesting to me because the Sword Slash actually covers at least three blocks of space visually, yet only actually affects one block. You can see this most clearly when cutting bushes and tall grass. The attack only cuts a single bush directly in front of Link. When taking a look at the enemies, I discovered another interesting thing. The enemies actually have hitboxes that cover the entire span of the sprite. That might seem like the obvious thing at first, but I generally thought the attacks only hit the block of the space the enemy takes up. You can see how here the enemy only really takes up one single block of space, yet you can hit the enemy in a space that technically shouldn't hit them. This is further tested by firing arrows at enemies, which shows the arrows hitting the enemy in the head even though they are technically adjacent to the enemy in 3D space. I know it's a 2D game, but you get what I'm saying. Okay, so let's get back to Cloudscape. Using that research, I decided on a couple of things for combat. One, I wanted players' attacks to be fast and allow for freedom of movement. I don't want to lock the player in place for too long. Two, I want the Sword Slash to utilize the entire range of the attack, not just a space in front of the player. Three, I want enemies to have generous hitboxes so you don't have to literally stand one pixel from them in order to hit them. With that said, I went about implementing all of this, and here are the results. So the first thing I want to show off is that I've actually updated the Slash attack to have animation now. Um, it's not finalized, but I'm okay with it for now. It works. Uh, he gets a little angry when he's slashing. So the one thing I pulled from Legend of Zelda is that I wanted a quick attack um, that you can ma maneuver around really easily after you've attacked. So what I wanted to do was just have this nice, quick attack that doesn't lock you in place very long. I think it's like 0.2 seconds or 0.15 seconds or something like that. So you're, you're not just like committing to an attack forever, there's a little for, like forgiveness there. So with that said, let's go ahead and introduce our first monster that I've added into the game. So we have a little slime here and he's just kind of hopping around. His goal is to basically just drive towards the player as much as possible and attack whenever he gets close enough. Um, I will have different sorts of modes for monsters, so maybe the monster is a little shy or it's you know, self-preservation mode makes it avoid the player, but here this it, player, this monster is just aggressive. So as you can see, once he gets within a certain radius of the player, a certain distance, he'll actually start doing this jump attack. And so that's the only time that the slime actually is dangerous to the player. Otherwise, the player can push the slime pretty easily and just walk up and touch it. This allows for a little bit of interesting combat because what you could do is actually maneuver the slime somewhere else where you don't want it to, or where, wherever you want the slime to be, you can actually maneuver the slime into that position. Another quick thing to note is that the slime does have a collision box, uh, but this collision box actually gets turned off as the slime is doing its attack. So while it's in the air turning into a cube and while it slams down, there is no collision box on the slime. But otherwise you can push against the slime pretty easily so what this allows is for the player to actually be able to run underneath the slime as it attacks which can allow for a better repositioning for the player so this just adds an extra little layer of combat strategy another reason why i didn't want the slime to have a collision box while it's jumping for the attack is that it would actually push the player away from itself when it was going up so when it reached the height of its jump, it would actually push the player like this, and then it would never be able to hit the player. So turning off the monster's collision box was actually just a necessity, but it ended up being a very good thing anyway. 
So here you can see I actually got hit. Um, so if you don't, if you just stand here, you will take damage and you get knocked back. I have a nice little temporary uh, placeholder animation of him getting hurt. Uh, so he just kind of gets knocked around. Um, so that's that's the damage the, the slime can do to the player, and you can see that the health actually drops down as well. When he gets hit, you'll see he'll take damage, and there goes my heart. Uh, of course, the, the UI is still a work in progress, um, but I just wanted something there to visualize the health and the energy for the player. Um, so with the player attacking the slime, you can actually just you know, swing and attack as soon as it's not attacking. You can see I did a few things with the slime's damage. You can see first it gets knocked back, it flashes, it loses little slime globs off of it, and then it, it also plays the animation, so it changes animation. After three hits, the slime blows up, turns into a dust cloud, and disappears. Um, so that's the basic attacks for the player and for the slime. Um, we can also add a lot of slimes and see how this kind of changes up your strategy. So you have to actually kind of think about it. You don't want to be standing in place for too long because if you're swinging at one, you get hit by the other. Um, you have to kind of corral them together and, and try to hit them all at the same time. It actually works the best. Um, you can see the slime can actually drop items as well. Right now it's just dropping this slime uh, glob. You can put that away into your inventory. That's mostly it for the combat so far. I'd cover more, but I don't want to just ramble for an hour. But with the combat portion of the video covered, I thought I'd quickly just give another shout out and thanks to the people giving me suggestions and feedback. I had quite a bit of feedback on the way item pickups are being handled. Some of you had concerns about it being too tedious along with equipping items to the toolbar. So a problem that we were looking into was that it was a little too monotonous to sit here and pick up items one by one hitting two different keys to pick it up and put it away. Um, so what I wanted to do was just set up a hotkey so that if you hold the hotkey down, which is just the action key, you will actually just start picking up everything. So this is almost like an auto pickup. And it provides the best of both worlds because you can do either option. So if I, I, I want to just pick up an item and just carry it around, I can do that. Um, but if I want to pick up everything all at once, I can just hold the button down and it just picks everything up and immediately puts it away. Another suggestion was that it was really painstaking to sit here and pick up an item and then bring it down to the equipment bar and put it into the slot. And the same for picking up an item from the equipment slot and bringing it back up to the inventory. So what I did here is I just added a hotkey. So if you press the third key, it just immediately equips whatever item you have selected. So it'll actually do this in the order that the empty spaces are in your equipment. So it'll go for the primary two slots first and then it will just fill the rest of the slots like so. This also works in reverse, so if you come down here and you want to just hit the same key, you can just unequip everything without having to drag and drop it back and forth. The nice thing is that you can still pick up an item and drag it down manually, so you can still do things like switching items around. Uh, that's just done the same way that it was done before. I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I'm happy to see the growing interest in my game. I'm just a solo developer working tirelessly on this project, and I appreciate all the support I can get. Keep the feedback coming, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.